Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 10th of August. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined for about the 65th time this week, Joshua <laughs> Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Yeah, it's fair, fair enough, Derek. I know you're tired of seeing me. Um, <laughs> I'm good, a bit blurry-eyed, haven't watched the game back, but um, yeah, a few more, few more talking points to get into, I think. I um, thought the first half was, first 30 minutes was pretty good watching it back, so Looking forward to getting into it for the last time this week. You'll be pleased to know. Yeah, we'll delve a bit more into the detail. We had an instant reaction to the game last night. Folks, you can go and check that out on our YouTube page or Facebook, whatever platform you prefer. Before we talk about the game, Joshua, um, we've got a, a cracking uh, giveaway um, coming yeah. up. But a brilliant night uh, organised by Five Stars where some Rangers icons of the past are heading to Glasgow. Can you tell us more? Yeah, I'm going to pull up the poster, Derek. But as you can see, Five Stars uh, night with Brian Loudrop, Eric Bo Anderson and uh, Peter Lover, uh, Lovercrans. I always pronounce that wrong. Um, 25th of August um, in Glasgow. I think it's at the Double Tree, And we're giving away two free tickets to sit at the Rangers Reviews table, no less, Derek. So you'll be there, uh, I believe. Are you going to be there? I think you are. Yes, I'm yeah, going to make it up, yeah, which uh, I cannot wait yeah. for that one. Uh, yeah. yeah, Friday yeah. the 20... yes. 25th of August, so 25th, I think it's the 25th, 25th of August. it's on the poster, um, but people can yeah. sign up yeah, for free, all you've got to do is sign up to the newsletter and we will email, we'll be emailing out a form, uh, so totally free to enter, um, you, you get free obviously admission to the night as well, which should be a great night, loads of us from the Rangers Review going and uh, yeah, you'll be at our table as well, so good week competition, free to enter, all you need to do is make sure you're signed uh, up to the newsletter, the newsletter gives you a bit of content every day for free, uh, also kind of links you back to some of our best content from the day and it's a good kind of good thing to receive, Derek, if you want to kind of keep up to date on everything you can read, watch, listen to that day. Um, so the competition, we're going to close that next Friday because the date today obviously is the 10th. Um, so it's two weeks tomorrow at this event. But if you want to come yeah. along, make sure you're signed up to the newsletter. You'll get a form to enter and uh, yeah, it'd be great to, great to have you at the table. Yeah, you get to spend some time with myself, Joshua, Johnny, Steve, Stevie will be there uh, as well, and a good few others. So I uh, cannot wait. I've uh, got great memories. In fact, incidentally, I've seen a cracking post from Brian Loudrop yesterday uh, on his Instagram yep. page with uh, his young grandson, his first grandson with a Rangers jersey. He's got Loudrop 11 on the back. Um, and he says, uh, first, like, what was it? First grandchild, uh, first something else, uh, best club, which I found was uh, real heartwarming. So uh, yeah, cannot wait to see. Godrop uh, back in Glasgow. Likewise, Eric Bo Anderson. I was um, uh, was uh, rep. People used to call me Eric Bo back in the day uh, really? when I was playing at school and what have you. So, uh, so wow. uh, hopefully, I get we uh, have a wee chat with, with Eric Bo if that that opportunity materializes. And and Peter Lovercrans is, is CGM fifty five six. Right. Josh, I cannot wait to see him. Of course, he's uh, well thought of by the Rangers uh, support, uh, especially after that Scottish Cup winning goal uh, against Celtic. But uh, it did bring us a cracking turn. Uh, so, yeah, cannot wait to see them all uh, back in Glasgow. Right, let's uh, talk uh, Rangers last night then, Joshua, because, uh, of course, they'll take a 2-1 lead to Geneva for the uh, in the Champions League uh, third qualifying round second leg. It's the slenderest of, of leads, of course. It started off also positively last night when James Tavernier netted a penalty, a well-struck penalty after Todd Cantwell was uh, taken down in the penalty area. Bonabaricic then delivered a teasing ball across for Serial Dessers to net his first goal for the club 15 minutes in. It looked like Rangers would run away at that point. Um, but however, pretty unfortunate handball after the VAR check given uh, after the ball struck uh, Dessers' arm. And uh, Servette got a goal back just uh, before half time, and that's how it finished. The Servette goalkeeper was in inspired form in the second half. Rangers really struggled to break down a resolute Servette backline. Of course, they were down to 10 men just before the hour mark as well, but we all know uh, they're, they're used to playing with 10 men, as we saw last week against Genk. It leaves the tie in the balance and with a number of key players returning for them next week, it's set to be an absolute powder keg of a fixture, Joshua. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, uh, watching the game back, I definitely think that there was the opportunity for Rangers to kill it. <clears throat> Whether Sam Lammers would have been offside for that chance or not, um, it, it was obviously a, a really good one. I think the highest value chance they created of the game. But overall, um, a win's a win in Europe. Again, as we spoke about last night, Derek, I think the way that this game is viewed will very much be dependent on next week. Um, what you would say about next week is Rangers will probably have even more space to play into because Servette will have to gamble. They're the ones that have to go out and score. Um, obviously, obviously, if the game were to, to end nil no Rangers will go through. Um, but I thought that watching it back last night, Derek, for me, and we've got a piece on the website coming about this today, I thought you saw just how important Todd's Campwell is to that team um, just the little things he, he brings you know that we've had a lot of conversations uh, over the past week about his best position and we were speaking last night about you know my opinion it's, it's his role uh, his role in the team that's more important um, and when he's got freedom to yes move into lots of attacking areas and, and receive the ball and run beyond and, and all these types of things but also drop in um, the, the second goal starts from him winning the ball back and then he's in between the centre halves um, and, and it's just those minor details that helps Rangers to break pressure he moves to the right plays the ball into Suter who obviously does really well to to get up the pitch and I just thought Campwell was a perfect example of the things that you miss when he's not there his game intelligence his ability to, to really set the tempo for Rangers wherever he's playing um, in the midfield and there was an opportunity to, to put that game out of sight last night Derek undoubtedly I think if that front three had been playing together a little bit longer they've obviously only had a, a handful of training sessions together um, then then that would have been yeah. the case it, it does leave it somewhat open but I think from the game last night Rangers will be confident that when they do go to, to Switzerland next week they'll have enough uh, certainly have enough opportunities I guess it's about picking a team that's, that's going to go uh, be aggressive and, and, and get the job done over there yeah, you've got the past networks at hand, Joshua. Can you give yeah. us a little idea of how Rangers performed with regards to that last night? Yeah, so obviously a lot of a lot was made of this at the weekend, and I do think past networks can be kind of misunderstood um, because you'll have some teams, Derek, who you look at their past network and it's designed to be like a perfect symmetrical um, kind of chart, and that's because of the way that yeah, they have to play in one zone. So then it's that that that's kind of what success is, I guess, for their game plan. But for someone like Beale's football team, I think it, although it's kind of symmetrical last night, it's because players have a lot of positional freedom. I don't think it matters as much to him. Yeah, you see that Dessers was speaking about it in the press conference last night. Um, you see it in, in the positioning of of Campbell and Lammers. Uh, if you look at where Campbell was throughout the game, obviously kind of started in that left sided role, and and I think that suits him because he can receive it. Um, on his right foot uh, on the left side of the pitch and play inside at, at different angles and he saw him do that continually throughout the first half Ryan Jack was dropping in to form a back three and I thought that the second goal actually in particular Derek was a really good example of why sometimes in football but we all want teams to attack fast and, and always go forward sometimes going back is the right thing to do because it's just waiting for it was waiting to trigger the Servette press that allowed Rangers to play through the blind and, and score what was a, a really really good uh, team goal for the second and um, you saw Danilo and, and and Lammers both play off Dessers somewhat it wasn't quite the the two number nines right through the middle Dessers was more in the last line with Danilo playing a little bit off the left I think you'll see a lot of flexibility in that throughout the season and um, Lammers kind of came off the right more last night and Although his end product lacked on a couple of occasions, again, I think you see what he's going to give you. Um, so impressive off the ball, I, I thought as well, um, but just so two-footed and gives you a lot of options with that. Uh, excellent with the back to goal, can really manipulate the opponents in that way. And Tavernier and Barris is higher than, than at the weekends. I think that Rangers aren't going to be our hope, but I don't think they're going to be a team who's reliant on lots of crosses this season, although that was maybe somewhat the concern when they went down to 10 men at Servette. It just became a bit of a different game. But the difference between what they were doing at the weekend compared to the first half was it was at speed, even when they went backwards and they slowed the game down, they, they sped up at the right time. And and Barisic getting onto the last line and crossing, uh, you know, kind of in transition is completely different to if you're 30, 40 yards from goal and you're, and you're swinging one in with a defence that's already set. So I, I think you could see a little bit more clearly what Rangers are trying to do, especially in that first half hour, aggressive off the ball when they lose the ball, trying to get up and win it back. 
um, lots of overloads around the ball. And yeah, you don't need to, I don't think, get too hit up about the positioning of these pass networks, but sometimes it can just become interesting to see where certain players were who had a lot of the ball. I think only Tavenier had more passes than Campwell um, in the game. He was he was really involved. And I thought one of the key takeaways for me, Derek, was that although this was a different game to the, the game against Kilmarnock at the weekend, there was still times where Savet, you know, they sat in and the task was for Rangers to, to move them about. Um, for, for either goal, you see that. And Campwell was so involved and instrumental at the bottom of the pitch. And I just think there's a lot to be said for getting your creative players on the ball um, with the game ahead of them and allowing them to be the ones that that try and create space and just create that little opening um, that allows you to, to burst through the defence. So, yeah, Todd Campwell, definitely man of the match for me. And I thought you saw that regardless of whether he's playing at the number 10 position or in the midfield, it's not so much about where he starts because he's got so much freedom. It's about whether he has that freedom to go and impact the game. And, yeah, I thought he did that really well last night. Yeah, I thought he was good. Uh, Broxy loves the Ranger review, says Cantwell must start at the weekend, hopefully Sifu too. Yeah, I was impressed by Jose Sifuentes uh, when he came on. Origami Dinosaur says Sifuentes looked promising. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. Hopefully he starts at the weekend uh, against Livingston. Uh, James Skeen says Cantwell and Raskin were pushing us forward, especially first half. There was an interesting point, though, um, on the, especially it was just based on the second half, Top G says, morning, lads. We seem to panic in the final third. I think that's a fair comment, Joshua. Is that just a case of players trying to develop relationships, new players that have came into the building? Do you think that's something that will develop over time, or is it something to be concerned about? Yeah, of course it's going to develop over time, but I think that you know, Cyril Desters was speaking about this in his press conference as well, and we know the, the kind of, I guess, the emphasis that Beal always speaks about relationships between players and the importance of that again to go back to his style of football um i think in the final third it looks rather than being regimented and having specific um patterns that players know when you get the ball here you, you roughly have to play into this area i think there's a lot of freedom and i think because of that it works best when players know one another and know where they're going to be moving and, and how they play in, in, in combination. So I think, of course, that's going to come with time. That was the first time that front three played together. But you saw some flashes of Dessers and Danilo again. It's not going to see them at their, their finest yet. Um, what, what you would say is that there was more of an opportunity for Rangers when that game was at 2-0 to go and, um, you know, end it really to kill the tie. Um, or yeah. Even if that didn't translate necessarily to five or six high quality chances in the box, there was just a lot of space in transition. And I guess, conversely, there was a lot of space for Servette as well. And it's about trying to find that balance to, to, to not concede too many chances. But um, yeah, I, I think you can see, I thought you could see clearly what they were trying to do in the first 30 minutes um, after what was a, a really frustrating game at the weekend. And Although it could have been 3-0 three, three and, and if Lammers puts that goal away, if VAR doesn't chop it off, it becomes a completely different tie and, and maybe the, yeah. there's a lot more positivity about that. You can't really also sniff at a win in Europe because although Rangers have been very good in Europe over the last few years, it's still a difficult competition. That's still a team, you're right, Derek, that I've just defied the odds uh, to, to get beyond Genk. And even if they're a team that you look at them and you yeah. think Rangers should be beating them, um, when the game went down to, when they went down to 10 men, in, in a way it almost suited them, I think, because they didn't have that that same expectation to to get up the pitch and made it a little bit more difficult for Rangers. So the last 20 minutes, you'd have liked to see Rangers create a bit more. Um, I think that's something that will still need to be developed because they're going to play a lot of games where it is slow, the tempo slow, and, and the, the onus is on them to go and uh, you know break down the opposition. Yeah, and Servette will have to come out, of course, on Tuesday night because they are down in the tie. So... Uh, maybe a slightly different approach to what we've seen at Ibrox. In fact, it will be a different approach, of course, because I think that it was a containment job for them last night. Let's get to a few of the comments uh, that are coming. Just uh, off the back of Sifuentes, Dave Fulton says, I like the look of Sifu. He's not afraid to get stuck in. His physicality surprised me. Just looking back to the defence, Dane the Life says, uh, uh, do you think it will be Goldson and John at the back now, lads? Uh, until if yes, I believe that will be the case. Leon Balligan, I think, has, has been signed as backup Joshua uh, to come in if there's uh, any injuries sustained to any of them. We know that Rangers are interested in the left-sided centre-back. Ben Davis is uh, still to come back as well. Michael Beale says, I think, it was was it next week, just before Morton, I think he might be available. They may to be seen if he will still be uh, at the club when the transfer window closes, of course. 
But at this moment in time, that is Rangers' best centre-back pairing. Yeah, hard to argue with that. I, and, and I thought that although Suter at the weekend, he picked up the ball in a lot of positions where he thought it was more natural for a left footer. Um, yesterday, I, you see his best trait isn't for me his passing, it's a, his ability to carry out the back under pressure. And he, he can dribble. He can he can carry the ball so effectively for, for a big central defender um, and, and takes it into some dangerous areas. And again, you need to, to commit and break lines at some point or, or take a risk to... Uh, score goals and 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 Suta did that yeah. really well for 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 the second goal in particular. So yeah, I don't think much changes over the overall. Derek, I still would like to see Rangers probably put one more player in there. Um, if they were to get Champions League money, then I think that would certainly help. Maybe it depends somewhat on outgoings as well, because at times I do think that left footer gives you balance. I thought the game suited Barisic last night, but um, I think there's games that won't suit him as well. Uh, Beal was kind of quick to shoot down uh, rumours that Ridvan wasn't happy at the club. He said he, he has lost his best mate in Fashion Sakala. Um, but apart from that, he said he'll be back. Yeah. I think it was before the Morton game he's expected to be back. So, you know, Ridvan hasn't really, apart from the end of last season, he obviously had that injury and he's not really been able to have a run in, in the team, whether it be the, the fact that he wasn't picked when he initially came into the club or, or injury issues since. Um, so I think it's important that he gets up to speed um, for domestic games, which I think will be more suited to him. Barisic, when he is in games like that, and it's isolating his crossing and his final ball, I think he can look very good. And and that was an excellent cross for for the what was it the second goal? Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously over the course of the season, you're going to need more options there. You're right, Balogun's been brought in as cover, and you just hope that while Davies is coming back or uh, whatever happens in that position, um, Suter is able to, to stay fit as he has done so far because when he's there, Derek, I think he, he has shown he's the strongest partnership alongside Goldson, even if he makes that mistake at the weekend. And, you know, he has made a couple of errors leading to goals so far. Um, again, you, you hope that's something that that won't be uh, consistent throughout the season, uh, even if I'd still like Rangers to, to strengthen a little bit there. Yeah, uh, as Joshua says, folks, um, Michael Beale was asked about Red Van. Nothing uh, in those rumours. He's been told to find a new club. And there's a comment here I wanted to address as well. We touched on it last night, but Neil McLean says, any truth in this looking at Harry Suter if I've got his first name right? Um, you have got his first name right. You've not, um, And uh, you've got his surname uh, wrong. You've got an E instead of an A, but what? But we're not going to uh, pick you. Well, we we'll have picked you up on that, but no biggie, Neil. Um, but Michael Beale was asked about Harry Suter. There was um, a report suggesting that Rangers are interested in the Leicester centre half. He said last night there might that might be a bit of lazy stuff around that because his brother plays for us and he follows our club. If there is any news on that, then you will be the first to know. Um, so a bit of cold water on that, um, I think, Joshua. But Harry Suter, if, if an opportunity were a rat to arise that, that Rangers could bring him in, could you see a, a, a Suter brother partnership at the back? I always find that uh, comment funny. You'll be the first to know because it's just absolutely yeah. not true. So it's that in a press conference, is it? But um, yeah, I mean, Suter moved for what, was it fifteen million? Was it, was it less than that? It was a lot of money he moved to Leicester for. I might have just plucked that number at the sky, but I'm pretty sure it was it was a, a sizable transfer fee. Obviously, he's left footed, um, but yeah, Beal certainly didn't take up uh, that name too much last night, like he has done in the past. Often, I think when there is a player that uh, he likes or is going to be eventually at the club, you can kind of trace it back to, for example, when he first spoke about Nico Raskin or, or Todd Cantwell, and he was kind of happy to go into a bit of detail on the player. Um, obviously, the the dynamics of him being a left-sided centre-half um, work well. Can't think of a brother brother and brother centre-back partnership off the top of my head. That would be quite unique. Yeah. Um, but, it, I, mean, I mean, John Suter, the one that is at Rangers, I think he can play that left centre back role relatively well because because he can carry the ball, so he can go through pressure. You know, he's not just relying on passing the ball back to his, uh, to his other centre back. Um, but if you're looking at the depth that Rangers have in that area and the injury problems they've had, because Ben Davies has had a lot of injury issues since he came to the club as well, hasn't he? He's probably been out three or four times. Connor Goldson obviously has had those two serious injuries in the space of a year after playing you know, almost every minute for four seasons. Leon Balogun isn't someone that's going to be able to play 
loads and loads of games purely because of his age. We know John yeah. Suter's injury history. So it, it, it's an area where you need that stability. And I think that, that hurt Rangers last season, not having that. Um, whether or not it's Harry Suter, obviously time will tell. But yeah, Beal certainly, did, yeah. certainly didn't take up um, the, the offer of, of speaking about him, shall we say. Yeah, uh, just on very, that. very good player, incidentally. And I, I mean, he obviously, yes, he is. At, the, at the World Cup, he kind of stood out. Um, and I think he'd just come back from a long term injury then as well. Uh, but yeah, just thought yeah. we should add that. Scotland's loss is Australia's gain with regards to yeah. that. I've seen him a couple of times when he was at Stoke City, and of course, he was at Ross County on loan for a bit and a big money move to, to Leicester. Um, yeah, but in terms of uh, brothers playing at the back for, for anyone, I can't recall anyone. I think the last, in terms of Rangers brothers playing in the same team, not quite sure if the two McCrory brothers played in the same team. Uh, I'm sure they did at youth level, but the, I think we're happy back with the DeBoer brothers. Um, yeah, I don't think they did the McCrory brothers because Ross McCrory was away by the time that Robbie McCrory played in the, yeah. the European game in the old firm. And he obviously played in goals, Ross McCrory, at the end of the yes. Gerrard's first season, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, I think it is a De Boers, as uh, Kevin uh, uh, and Bobby uh, quite rightly point out, but is it a unique thing? Um, so, yeah, um, I think. Uh, Michael Beale had other things on his mind when he was asked about that uh, last night. But in terms of big match at the weekend, Joshua, um, yep. can you foresee a, a raft of changes with perhaps one eye on Tuesday? I don't think you can afford to do that with one eye on on Tuesday. I think I think Saturday is absolutely massive based on the fact Rangers lost the opening game. They have to win this and win it well. Oh, of course, yeah. Um what you would say is that there's a lot of players that want to get minutes. You know, you look at someone like Yanis Hadji, who has only seen, what, five minutes of action in two games. So there will be a lot of competition uh, for places in there. Does Sifuentes come in? Um, I agree with you. I'd be reluctant to make too many changes, especially in that front three where you want players to be playing games. I'd probably start that same team again. And sorry, the same front three again. Um, you've got Dowell and Sifuentes to... to throw into the mix as well so you're starting to see a bit of depth which is good obviously yeah. Lawrence and Ruth come back into this well, could come back into the squad because um they uh, they aren't in the European squad for for the playoff round or the, the third qualifying round so there is options there but no I totally agree with you I think that these games at Ibrox when there's expectation can go one of two ways it can be a bit of a poison chalice at points because unless you go and put on a proper 90 minute performance with no dips there's always going to be criticism because that's just what people uh, expect um and if you don't score an early goal it, it can be difficult but i thought you saw last night um again the energy that rangers need to bring off the ball and um, what they're trying to do on the ball i think that the task for them is and to be fair, I think they really did this under Michael Beale last season, um, is to, to take care of domestic fixtures. Uh, there was only the, the game against Aberdeen away from home where they didn't do that really outside of old firms last season. So definitely keep Campwell in there for me, keep Raskin in there. Uh, thought he uh, you know, was, was decent enough and a little bit more uh, of a, an adventurous role uh, last night. Maybe expect him to return to the base in midfield and... Good to see Sifuentes get minutes early on because I'm in, always in favour of trying to get players up to speed quickly and especially when he's you know he's not coming from three months off. He's coming from ha play, having played half a season. So you'd imagine he'll be kind of at peak fitness um, and we'd like to see him play uh, at the weekend. So a couple of changes, but I agree with you. You've got to go and put out a strong team uh, ahead of the, the game, which is on Tuesday. So the turnaround time isn't huge yeah. um, and maybe that'll, that'll impact things as well. But at this stage of the season, you wouldn't imagine there'd be too too much kind of cause for concern about rotation. It's about trying to put the strongest team out and probably more importantly, trying to put the team out that, that's going to build that continuity ahead of Tuesday as well. Yeah, uh, let's get to a few of the comments. Uh, first of all, just on brothers that have played for Rangers, Stuart Grant, thank you for that. The McNeils played together, of course, uh, Peter and Moses McNeil, uh, way back uh, in, in the day, of course, yeah. when uh, Rangers were, were, were forming. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, we'll get to one one or two comments before we wrap up. First of all, world's greatest DJ, what is the deal with Sterling? He was an unused sub last night. I think we... Could we see him at the weekend, do you think, Joshua? Like to, I'd like to. Uh, I, I mean, he's obviously been coming back from injury and that impacted his pre-season. So I think that's the, that's the deal with it, that you weren't probably going to throw him in last night and it was a game that was quite suited to Barisic because of that, because of that uh, delivery. But... Um, would like to see him at the weekend, gives Rangers another option. And although he's spoken a lot, Sterling, about uh, the fact that he's not a defence first, well, maybe I think that is the kind of the phrase he used, a defence first fullback. Um, 
he played higher up the pitch as, when he was younger and has played at wing back a lot for Chelsea. And I think you can see that in the way he plays. So I do think he'll be able to contribute going forward as well. So, yeah, I'd imagine you would see him at the weekend and, and that would be another um, positive to to get a bit more depth in the fullback area because Rangers haven't had that this season. And, and uh, yeah, they need, yeah, they need competition on both sides of, 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 that, uh, of that, uh, that area of the pitch, don't they? Yeah, I think I'd like to see him at left back just to see how he gets on. Uh, and Heller says, uh, Hadji should have got more time last night. Uh, I think Hadji, could we see him start on, on Saturday? Um, is that a possibility, you reckon? Do you think he'll, he'll play in that sort of deeper lying role we've seen him at points in, in pre-season? Um, what do you think? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I actually thought that when the game went down to 10 men, he might have came on quicker because I think that can kind of suit him, mm. um, that type of game where it is about trying to trying to play the, the final pass. Uh, it's good to have options. It's good to have players that want to play because for too long last season, I guess when Beal arrived, he had 12, 13 players and outside of that, he didn't have much in the way of competition. So no. uh, I, I think he's got the squad, although it still needs trimmed, um, somewhere closer to, to the maybe the numbers that he wants it in terms of competition. Um, had you played as that number eight, you're right. And again, that's about getting players front face and on the ball creative players but then I guess the, the question is where do minutes come right at the moment because you'd imagine that you want to keep that front three playing more regularly I'd say um, or certainly variations of it if Seema comes in at points as well but I think Lammers is going to be that number 10 I think Cantwell is going to be the kind of other attacking midfielder in there so and if you're talking about Sifuentes and Raskin minutes are going to be hard to come by so I'd like to see him get get an opportunity he spoke about that pre-season being I think it was the toughest one of his life uh, was the phrase he used. He's always, I think, wanted to play in that number eight position. Um, when yeah. he did the interview with our website, he spoke about that even towards the end of Stephen Gerrard's time. And, and that's gone back to back a few years now, but kind of developing his game to allow him to do that. He, he does give you a lot of options in there, Derek. But I guess the issue is, do you want a bit more continuity going into Tuesday? Because although last night Rangers dominated, it'll be, it will be a different game over there next week. This is, I think, their first sellout crowd since the ground opened or, or something like that. And w Would you tell me that last night? Yeah, that is correct. I told you that, that information yeah. last night. Um, yeah. They opened up in 2003, so that's the first time sellout since their opening game at the stadium. So it's going to be pretty raucous. Although I did ask our good uh, Swiss football journalist about how, how intim intimidating it will be for the Rangers players. And he says that uh, I'm sure it won't put them off their game um but yeah it'll be interesting listen there's going to be a good uh few thousand rangers fans there i think the allocation yeah. is two thousand but as we all know there'll be i think uh, one or two more in and around uh, the ground so uh it's an interesting place to go geneva so i'm sure rangers will be well backed over there as well i think they'll need to be um because the, the, the servette fans will be right on their back home cheering their team on yeah, they, they, they will. Um, I was just sorry, distracted by the comment section there, Derek. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know how many of Servette's players, I think they were missing about six players last night and they were missing some important players. Obviously, yes. they got uh, Doolin sent off last night and he's an important player for them as well. So he'll be missing next week. But if they are a little bit back up to, to full fitness and they've kept the tie alive and for them, for where the game was at 2-0 compared to it going 2-1 with that stroke of luck for the penalty, I think they will feel like the game's set up for them. Um, so for, for, for Rangers, it's about putting on a performance that again capitalise, capitalises on that space because they'll have chances and all of the away goal rules in there. I guess if it's another game of both teams going at one another, which Bill kind of insinuated it would be, I don't think Rangers they'll maybe set off the game a little bit more, but I don't think they're going to go there and 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 sit in their shell for ninety minutes and try and keep no. it in nil nil. I think the, the right idea is to go and try and score an attack because you've got to make another game about who's better. Last night Rangers were they, sh they should have made it more. Now I've got to go and finish the job in Geneva. Yeah, they certainly do. Okay, folks, that'll do us there. We'll wrap up now. Thanks to everyone for interacting with the show as ever. A big thanks to Joshua as well. We'll be back again tomorrow um, as we gear up for the match against Livingston at Ibrox. But until then, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.